So in today's video, I wanna share with you a gut instinct feeling I had about not going on a trip and how listening to that gut instinct, even though it's something I've never done, how it actually led me to God opening a door for me to get a new job, a job I've been praying for. So if you're in that place, you ever have a feeling about something, I wanna encourage you to listen to that feeling because it could be God um, wanting to open a new door for you. So definitely watch this video and be encouraged. So like I said, this is gonna be the first in a faith series that I'm doing and maybe it's gonna be like Faith Fridays or something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna be sharing stories out of my own life. My next video is gonna be about a stolen laptop and that was a really interesting story and I definitely encourage you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on that. Hola, I'm Lindsay and I'm a Tennessee girl who has lived abroad in Spain and Mexico teaching English. I currently live in Hollywood, Florida near Miami and work as a freelancer on Upwork managing YouTube channels. I love to share stories about my life experiences, travels, freelancing, and faith. Don't forget to subscribe to follow along on all my adventures. You never know what you might learn along the way. So I'm going to start this story 10 years ago. And really in 2013, it was really when I had my spiritual awakening um, and just like started to, you know, listen to God's voice in my life. I wanted to go back to church, but it all started when I was living in Mexico in 2013. So I'm going to link that video above. I think it's over here, over here. I always get that mixed up. But anyway, I definitely recommend going back to watch that video to kind of see the foundation that I'm laying for this faith series. But basically part of it, I, in 2013, I was teaching in Mexico and uh, some things happened there that ultimately led me to quit that job early, move back to Florida, South Florida in 2013. And um, at that time, I started going back to church. I was 28 at the time. And in 2013, when I moved back, like I had to look for a job. So at that time, I was an ESL teacher and I started teaching at different language schools in Fort Lauderdale even down to South Beach. And um, I think in 2013, I had over seven different jobs. I was even a secret shopper at one time. And the last job I had was I got in November of 2013. It was a job with the Florida State University doing a reading program for the public schools in Broward County. So Broward County is the county where Fort, La uh, Fort Lauderdale is located. It's the county above Miami-Dade County. At that time, it was, it was a good paying job. It was part-time though, it didn't, didn't have any benefits. And when I took that job, I told them one of the important things for me was to be able to work closer to Hollywood, which is the city I was living in at the time. And um, because all the other jobs I had, some were like way down in South Beach and um, all over Miami. I've worked all over, like, you know, down to Coral Gables and different locations. And I really just wanted to work somewhere in Hollywood or, or nearby or, or downtown Fort Lauderdale is not too far away. So they said, oh yeah, no problem. But when I end up going to get the job, they end up placing me in Coral Springs, which is like on the exact opposite side of the county is where I live. So it's about 30, 45 minutes, depending on traffic. So I was actually kind of disappointed by that because I was expecting to be placed at a school closer to my house. And on top of that, it didn't have benefits, which I knew it didn't have benefits. And I had just been denied health insurance at that time, around this time, like private insurance. So I was also kind of, you know, unhappy about that. But I took the job because at least I didn't have to drive to South Beach or something like that. I took the job and I just started working. And I told them in the interview that I already had scheduled a trip um, with two of my friends, uh, one other girl and then another girl and her family, her husband and her two kids, we were all going, all six of us, to Ecuador in February. So when I took this job, I already pre-arranged two weeks off in February and they were totally fine with that. They would have someone to cover that. Um, so I took the job knowing that in advance and I felt, okay, everything is good. I have this job. It pays a little bit more than other jobs I had. And going into new year, I really wasn't necessarily like looking for another job at that time. I was really, you know, just thinking about this trip and that's pretty much all that was on my mind. So this trip to Ecuador, I have been planning with these two friends for maybe like three or four months or, or something around there. Like I think around Thanksgiving, we started talking about it and you know, planning it. And I was like excited. I'd never been to Ecuador before. Um, I really hadn't been to South America, I don't think at that time. And, you know, I was going with two of my close friends. They were friends from, not necessarily from church, well, one of them was, and another another one of her friends and her family. And I thought, okay, well, I'll be staying with her family. And, you know, I'll have like, you know, authentic, like local type person experience, which I was excited about it. 
But I'll be honest, like in the back of my head, I was slightly concerned because if you've ever traveled with friends or, I mean, if you've traveled a lot, you know that certain people are good to travel with and other people are probably, you know, not exactly the best travel partners. Now, between these two friends, one friend, she's really quiet and calm and I've never traveled with her, but you know, I just know her personality. I feel like she's pretty easygoing. My other friend, um, she's sweet and kind and caring, but at the same time, um, I feel like she likes things done a certain way. And I think, you know, just hang out our, hanging out at her house every now and then is fine. But I was a little concerned about spending two weeks with her and her family. I don't know, I had a bit of an uneasy feeling about it. Now, additionally at this time, I, you know, I had been working a lot of different jobs and I really didn't have a lot of money saved up. I had some airline credit I could use for the flight so I wouldn't have to pay for the flight. But besides that, like I just did not have a lot of cash in the bank um, for emergency situations or even really for traveling. Like deep down, like I knew like in my spirit that I shouldn't be spending that money traveling. I should probably be saving it. And, and really I didn't feel like it was the right time to take a trip. Like I really needed to be working. I didn't really need to be traveling. And if you've ever been like in a pinch financially, like you just know, like you really shouldn't be going out a lot or you shouldn't be going to the movies or you shouldn't be spending a lot of money on things necessarily. You should probably be saving that money. So deep down, I thought to myself, you know what? I really, this is really not a good time to take a trip abroad. And additionally, I was concerned because like if I wanted to get a hotel or if I didn't feel comfortable at her house or if I wanted to do something else, like I really didn't have that extra money to go and do that. I mean, I could put on a credit card. I really don't want to do that either. So I had some concerns, like some internal like red flags going off that I probably should have thought about in advance, but I didn't. So as it was getting closer and closer to the day of the trip, um, the week before or the week leading up to the trip, I remember I was just having a really hard time sleeping. Like at night I couldn't sleep at, at all or just not really well at all. And I just was really tired every day and I had to pack and do all these things. And I could really tell like I was, I was ignoring this gut feeling. Like I knew I should be using this time of this, this two week trip early. I needed to be using it to be looking for a full-time job with benefits and just get me out of this like part-time job rut and this, and I wanted to get health insurance. I just wanted to have like a job with full benefits and just start working and make money. I was like at the time of my life where I just wanted to work and save up money. But meanwhile, the day before I was packing and getting everything together and I was almost ready, but I remember that my friend told me that she wanted me to bring special gifts for her sister and her parents and it was going to be Valentine's Day, so I was going to bring them some chocolate as well. And I remembered, I was like, okay, I'm going to go Saturday morning, the day of the flight. Um, I was going to fly that afternoon, I think, or like two or four or something like that, or maybe five. So I had time in the morning to go to the store. So I went to Publix and I bought some chocolate, different, maybe a couple boxes of chocolate. I went to Bath and Body Works and I bought different lotions and sprays and different things like that that she said her sister would like. So I bought all that stuff on Saturday morning. I packed up most of my stuff Friday. Saturday morning, I went to Publix and Bath and Body Works. And when I got back home, my brother, he was there living with me at the time. And I put all my stuff on the kitchen table and I went back to my room just to kind of gather some things together. And then I think I was gonna bring my suitcases in and then pack the rest of my stuff. But meanwhile, while I was back in my room, my brother had gone to the kitchen and he started like opening the box of chocolates and eating the chocolate out of the box. So when I came back into the kitchen and I saw him eating eating the box of chocolates. Mind you at this time, I was really tired from packing and not sleeping very good all week. And when I saw him eating the chocolates, which I planned to bring to my friend's parents, and I knew she really wanted me to bring like nice gifts for them. Um, when I saw him eating that chocolate that I had gone to the store that morning, even though I didn't feel like going, and I saw him eating that chocolate, I just like got so mad. I was like, what are you doing? That's a gift for my friend. Like I was so mad. Like normally I try and be like calm and even tone, but there are moments and I'm sure like everybody has them occasionally where it's just like, just, just not the right timing. So I ran back to my room and I was so mad. Like I don't even like probably if I wasn't tired, I wouldn't have gotten that mad about it. But I just knew that I was trying to make everything perfect for this trip. And then he like, I feel like that one little thing just like blew it. 
I don't know if I was yelling. I was like, ah, that was supposed to be for my friend's parents. And so like my brother came back in the room and he was like, what, what, what? He was like, uh, what's going on here? Like, what are you so mad about? You, you know, he's like, I'll go buy more chocolates. Like, what's the big deal? And then I kind of like told him everything about this trip and how I really felt like I shouldn't be going. And I, I really just didn't want to go. And I had needed to do other things instead. And he was like, you know what? Just cancel it. Just tell him you're not coming. And I was like, how can I cancel it? Like, I felt like they might give me, you know, like not a guilt trip about it, but be, be mad about it, you know? And they're like my probably two closest friends at that time. And I was like, oh, I can't call them. Like they're going to get mad. Like I know they're already at the airport or on their way to the airport right now. But I was like, you know what? Like I probably shouldn't go this trip. I should probably just stay here. You're right. And as I was thinking about it, I'm pretty sure my friend called me. Like, I don't remember calling them. I think she did call me and was like, hey, Lindsay, where are you? I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to make it to this trip today. So I had to explain to her, you know, I just, it just didn't feel like the right time. And I was really stressed out about things. And I just was going to cancel my trip. And it was probably like two hours before the flight took off that I decided to cancel this trip. So they just had to accept it. They were at the airport already. They were already at the gate. They were like, well, we really want you to come, but you know, if you feel like you should come or need to cancel, like that's totally fine. And after that, like after I hung up and like canceled the flight, like I had such an over overwhelming feeling of peace come over me just like, <sighs> And after not sleeping for days, I'm pretty sure after that, like I probably slept like a baby or at least slept better, like just, just so much more relaxed about things. But then I think like Sunday or Monday, I was like, hey, I have two weeks off. I should probably be spending this time looking for a job. Like I didn't want to tell my current job I, you know, didn't end up going on that trip. I was like, no, I'm going to use this two weeks like I should and look for a better job. But I remember that Monday or Tuesday of the, that two week vacation, I remember like praying about it. I remember saying to God, you know, I was like, God, you know, I've been looking for good jobs like all this past year. I planted so many seeds. I've made so many connections. Like I just want you to have someone to reach out to me during this time and, you know, get, have a job ready for me to go. You know, like I was just at that point, I was just kind of like fed up of like doing, doing, doing. And I just like, God, I'm just going to trust you to bring that person to me who has a job for me. So what did I do the rest of the week? Um, I'm pretty sure that I, I think I went to the beach most of the time. I don't even know if I even browse jobs or resumes or anything. I just remember I'm like, hey, I'm just going to put it in God's hands and not worry about it. Now, I want to say that this time, like for the average person or if you're not really Christian or a believer or a praying type person, it might not make sense at all in this situation to you, but the whole year prior to that, it's been about a year since I had this like spiritual awakening and I had been seeking the Lord more and praying and just like, um, you know, pushing in and just really seeking God for direction in my life. And um, so at that time, I was at a place where I could just say, Lord, you know, I trust you to provide for me. And in this situation, I know I could run all over the city looking for new jobs or sending out resumes, but I know that you have a job for me already lined up. And um, during this time, I know that you're going to bring it to me. Like I just knew in my heart that the Lord was going to bring me that job. So I had this vacation for about two weeks. I don't know if it was at the end of the first week or at the beginning of the, of the second week. I wasn't really, I don't really exactly remember, but I remember that I got a text message or like a Facebook message from a friend, a teacher friend I had worked with the summer before in California. At, in the summer of 2012, I had worked in California at a summer camp and he sent me a message. He was like, hey, Lindsay. He's like, do you still live like in the South Florida, Miami area? because I moved to South Florida and I can't remember he moved from maybe Georgia. He moved to South Florida and he was working at a um, private school in Miami. And he messaged me and he was like, hey, we need a new ESL teacher at our school. And when I saw the name of the school, I had actually applied to this school like four years before and I didn't hear back. But at that time I wasn't a licensed teacher and I had got my master's completed. So probably they just like threw my resume away or didn't pay attention to it. But when I saw that message right away, I was like, this is it. This is exactly what I said. Like God was going to 
have someone reach out to me with a job. And when I saw the school, I like almost laughed because I had already applied to that school like on my own and it didn't work out. But like this guy messaged me and he wanted me to co like contact his um, director or his the chairperson or over the ESL department and you know set up an interview which I was totally able to do because I was there and it's actually was pretty close to my house so I was able to like arrange all of that and had I been on the trip like I probably you know could have arranged it when I got back but you know that old saying like like strike while the iron's hot like I think like right when you hear about something like go ahead and get the ball rolling because let's say if I had come back a week later interviewed a week later like you know who, who knows what, how many other people could have interviewed in that meantime and maybe got the job over me so I immediately contacted them uh, went in the interview I can't remember exactly how long after it was. I might be at the end of that week or at the beginning of the next week. And they like hired me right on the spot, which they never do that. They usually always have the candidate come back and have a practice class with the kids. But they hired me right on the spot that day. And um, I was like super happy, you know, full benefits, close to my house, like a really great schedule. It was at a private Jewish school. So you get every day, every Friday, you get off at like 2 p.m., um, every Friday and we had a lot of holidays to for the Jewish holidays and it was just like a really um it, it was it was like almost funny because I remember like I tried on my own like years before to get a job there and it didn't happen and then finally like with God's help and this other person like it just worked out seamlessly and another funny thing about that interview like I had had my insurance private insurance policy canceled basically in November and if I didn't find another insurance I think I'd have to pay a fine or something like that this was back when Obamacare was first getting started and you had to get an insurance policy or something like that or you get like a fine and I remember I had to find some insurance before like April 1st for some reason maybe that was the deadline I don't really know but I remember that my health insurance from the school like went into effect on April 1st so I really do believe that only like God could have orchestrated that plan for me because I had tried on my own before to get a job at the school and it didn't work out and not only did he get a job for me at the school he got it during the time frame I asked him in those two week period um that I really need to get that job and it was just like and it was easy like I just had to show up I didn't even have to do the practice teaching lesson I got the health insurance and and it was one of the best jobs I've had in South Florida probably the best job I had that job was a real blessing to me at that school and I made a lot of good friends there and it was just like an amazing time in my life but had I not trust my gut instinct to not take that trip I really don't know if I would have gotten the job at the school or not. So long story short if you have a gut feeling about something or you have a nagging feeling that maybe you shouldn't be doing something or maybe you should be doing something else it could be God trying to tell you hey go this direction I have something better for you um you know, in the natural, it doesn't make sense, but in the spiritual, you know, it's God like paving the way for you. And if you don't believe in that or that doesn't make any sense to you, I'm going to be making more videos about it. But I just, you know, you can just pray, God, show me what I'm missing out on. Like, show me what you have for me. Show me the purpose you have for my life. Like, that's what I started doing. That's what I'm continuing to do. Um, you know, I've had some ups and downs with that, you know, I have to admit. Um, but I'm definitely on the up these days, like getting closer to that point. But anyway, I hope you find this video encouraging. Definitely listen to the gut instinct in you. If you have like a hankering about something, don't ignore it ask God about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be making more videos just about, you know, just really cool experiences I've had um, over the last several years as I have pursued God more in my life and just ask him to direct my life versus me trying to live my life. And it just, you know, it wasn't what I was hoping it would be. But the more I trust God, the more just supernatural doors open. So anyway, uh, if you haven't seen my video about my testimony of my supernatural experience in Mexico, I'm going to link that down below and above. And I really hope this video blessed you. My next video, I'm probably going to do the one on the stolen laptop. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on that. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.